Hi, I'm Phil Constantine, and this is Travels with Phil. It's the 50th anniversary of the first landing on the moon. That was Apollo 11th, and that happened on July 20th, 1969. So let's take a look back at that flight. I was fortunate enough that I actually worked at NASA in the Johnson Spacecraft Center. Now, I was, didn't do a lot of important stuff, but I helped run the computers later on in Apollo 16 and 17 and Skylab. Those are my old ID cards. Well, I was fortunate enough to meet lots of astronauts while working there and later in media. That's Buzz Aldrin from Apollo 11. That's also Michael Collins, who was the man that orbited the moon while Aldrin and Armstrong landed. And that's capsule communicator Capcom Charlie Duke. And this is the moon, and you'll see here where the uh, Apollo 11, the first landing on the moon, first time people stepped foot on the moon, landed right there where it says 11. Number five was the surveyor. So let's take a look around at the actual astronauts themselves. This is Neil Armstrong, one of his early pictures while working for NASA, but he was a pilot, a jet pilot. He was also a test pilot for quite some time. That's the X-15, one of the earlier space-type uh, airplanes that was out there. That's him of, with the flying bedstead, as the astronauts like to call it. And this is his official portrait, astronaut portrait for NASA. This is his, uh, what I call the sleepy Snoopy look. And then this is later in his life. Neil has since passed on, uh, but uh, he was an interesting person. Didn't sign a lot of autographs, by the way. And then this is Buzz Aldrin. He actually made Buzz his official name. Buzz was a nickname as a child uh, from his uh, sisters. And he was also a test pilot. He uh, was a, an ace, I believe, in Korea. And this is his official NASA portrait. And then him explaining at a press conference what the uh, spacecraft was going to do. And uh, this is him doing some uh, uh, weightlessness testing in the suits. This is him getting suited up for the big uh, step onto the rocket ship. And this is actually on the original flight there. And then this is him later on talking at an event not too long ago. And then coming up here, Michael Collins, the man who stayed up in the command module and orbited the uh, moon while Neil and Buzz walked on the moon. He eventually became head of the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum. An interesting guy. I met him as well, as you saw in that picture earlier. And uh, he was, they said he had the best sense of humor of the three guys that uh, landed on the moon. All right, let's look around a little bit and see what else. Uh, this is an older picture of him. And then a one or two more here. All right, and that's a picture I took, actually. All right, let's take a look at the spacecraft themselves. All right, this is the Saturn V rocket, one of the biggest rockets that's ever been built. It's enormous, 320 feet tall. They had to assemble it in that building that you saw back there. It was the largest air-conditioned building in the world for a while. This tractor that takes it out there moves it at one mile an hour to be able to move it without shaking it as it goes from the place where they put it together. That's the command module that you see there on the right, the surface module on the left. That's Werner Gunt. Uh, pad Führer, as they called him. And then this is the lunar module, uh, two parts. One landed and the other one uh, took off after they landed. So where did the Apollo program come from? Well, here's John Kennedy. I therefore ask the Congress, above and beyond the increases I have earlier requested for space activities, to provide the funds which are needed to meet the following national goals. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Rice was my old alma mater, and so that joke about Rice in Texas, Rice wasn't known NASA's for NASA's Flight Research Center at Edwards proposed a free flight lunar landing simulator program. The research test vehicle was intended to investigate the inherent problems of lunar descents where there is no drag and weight is only one-sixth of Earth. 
proposed technique for simulating the lunar gravity, install a jet engine underneath or within the machine on gimbals, so the thrust was always vertically upward. The engine thrust would then be adjusted so that the craft's net weight, that is its gross weight minus the engine thrust, would equal its lunar equivalent. The force required to lift the net weight would be provided by throttleable rockets. The first flight of the LLRV in October of 64 was flown by Joe Walker. First liftoff was what you might call tentative. The second was considerably smoother. During the following year, Joe Walker and Don Malik flew about 150 development flights, expanding the flight envelope and investigating the adequacy of the design and the systems. An advanced version of the LLRV, the Lunar Landing Training Vehicle, or LLTV, proved to be an excellent simulator and was highly regarded by the Apollo Lunar Module crews as necessary to lunar landing preparation. Typically, the pilot took off with the gimbals locked, flew out to the inner marker, which in this case was about four to 500 feet altitude, about a quarter of a mile from the intended touchdown spot. Arriving at the IP, he began a descent toward the target, switched into the lunar simulation mode, energized the lift rockets, and practiced the lunar landing. I was most fortunate to be involved throughout the entire lunar flying development. I had the pleasure of flying every one of the machines, the LLRF, the ground-based simulators, the LLRV, the LLTV, the lunar module, and even the Weber ejection seat, the last not by choice. NASA management was forever worried about the reliability and safety of these machines and continually wanted to shut them down but the pilots insisted they were vital to lunar landing preparation, and they prevailed. So after all the training, it was time to get ready to do the launch. Now that took a long period of time. Steak and eggs breakfast, that was been a uh, tradition among astronauts. And this, you can see them putting on their equipment there. And uh, this takes quite a while to get everything adjust adjusted properly. That's Neil Armstrong. Buzz Aldrin, and it takes a lot of uh, personnel to get everything properly attached, properly adjusted, make sure it fit properly, make sure it uh, didn't uh, was an abrasive, and they documented everything. Uh, I know when I worked at NASA, I didn't do anything important, and we documented everything, so you can imagine what they did with the uh, important things. And so that's uh, Buzz right there, trying to get comfortable while they're doing all the stuff, and they had portable air conditioners that they carried around with them uh, so that they wouldn't get too hot inside there. They had to protect you from outside heat and outside cold, so they ran air conditioning through there. Now that's Michael Collins as well, getting himself set up. And then once they were in their suits, it was time to get out, take the little transport van, and go the three-some-odd miles over to the pad itself. They keep these things far enough away that uh, the uh, rockets, when they go up, if they were to explode, it wouldn't cause any damage to the buildings. I was there for a, a shuttle takeoff, and three-some-odd miles away, which is closer than the general public can get, you could feel the heat. You really could feel the heat when the rockets uh, would go up, So, and the Saturn was even bigger. And it shook everything in the area when that thing went off. So this is uh, them driving out and all the folks taking pictures of them as they went along. And then they headed up the 320 feet up to the top of the rocket and then got put in. Now this is launch control at Cape Canaveral, Cape Kennedy. The vehicle starting to pressurize as far as the punch Jack King is doing the narration for Von Braun. We design the rockets. Firing coming, coming in now. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. Early 60, almost everybody in white shirts and black ties. Ten seconds and counting. Oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. T minus one minute, 35 seconds. The third stage completely pressurized. This is July 16th, 1969. 55 seconds and counting. Over a million people came out to watch it. Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Good luck and good speed. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. 
Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6. swing arms because they swing away from the rocket as it takes off. All of these actions you see right here are all happening at the same time. The white flakes you see coming down, they have to keep the rocket cool, the fuel cool, so this is ice that's condensed on the outside of the uh, rocket. And I know from my own experience watching it, the liftoff actually is very, very slow, but just very quickly, it is just out of there. critical parts of any launch uh, or flight is uh, clearing the tower. So all you got to do is drift it just a few inches away and you're banging into things and that's not good on a controlled explosion. I was 16 at the time that Apollo 6, uh, 11 took off. Just phenomenal experience. Well over a billion people actually watched the uh, landing. And a couple of days later, Houston, they were at the moon. Houston, we see you on the stairwell. Over. Roger, Eagle, I'm done. Only one person talks Roger, to the Roger, astronauts. Roger. He's called Captain. Yeah, He's like also an astronaut. Go for landing. Retro. Go. Fido. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. That's Gene Kranz, go. flight go. director. Go. Here, I'm talking Captain to the other folks, making sure flight. everything's Alpha okay for landing. Go for landing. Over. Roger, understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. You're looking great. I done control. We look good here. Fine. Roger, how about you, Telcom? Go. Guidance, you happy? Go. Fido. Go. 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet. Into the ag. 47 degrees. Roger. 47 degrees. Still looking very good. Here go. Top alarm. 12.01. 1201 alarm. 1201 alarm. Same type, we're go flight. Okay, we're go. We're go, same type, we're go. Altitude 1600. Eagle looking great. Roger, 1202, we copy it. He landed with 17 seconds of fuel left. 550, coming down to 23. 540 feet, and a 15. 
250 feet down at four. Down two and a half. Forward. Forward. That's 40 feet down two and a half. Picking up some dust. 30 feet two and a half down. Straight shadow. Four forward. Four forward. Drift into the right a little. Ready? Down and a half. 30 seconds. Forward drift. That's. Ready? Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Charlie Duke wiping his head. Very smooth touchdown. So that's Charlie Duke, Jim Lovell, sitting next to him. And here's a comment from him 40 years later. But the one thing, people may have heard your voice. They may not that's remember me. your name, but they've heard your voice. Because when Neil Armstrong landed, do you remember what you said? I do. Yeah, that was indelibly ingrained in my mind. Uh, after a few seconds after they touched down, uh, Neil said, uh, Houston, tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. And I responded with... Uh, with such excitement, I couldn't even pronounce twain. Uh, I said tranquility. I, uh, no, and now I corrected myself. Said, Roger, tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Absolutely. Yeah. So you are part Probably of that special of event. Yeah, right. All of history. It really was special. Really good guy. And then they walked on the moon. Getting back up to that first step. Uh, now these are some side by side comparisons. Uh, as I said, I was 16 when I watched this, and the picture was very fuzzy. So this is Neil from a camera on the uh, spacecraft itself. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. And You'll hear a delay because there's a time of delay for the time it takes to get to the moon and back. Okay, I just checked... Uh, Getting back up to that first step, uh, it's, uh, that isn't collapsed too far. There's a big space but, between uh, the bottom man, step and the moon because I wasn't sure how far I was going to go up. one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Okay, Neil, we can see Now this is Buzz coming okay, down. I'm leave that one foot up there and, uh, Okay, Almost every single picture you see time. on the moon from Apollo 11 with an astronaut in it go. is of Buzz Aldrin because Neil's the one that had the camera, the okay, good camera. Now I think I'll do the same. A little more. Not another inch. So he's practicing going there up. Going up. That's a good step. Yep. Buzz says, uh, I'm going to close the hatch door and make sure I don't lock it. And Neil said, Good idea. so much you can do for the quality that it came through because they didn't want to have a lot of uh, detail in the pictures because it would be harder to transmit and then this is the raising of the American flag there's a bar going across the top so it will display and it moves because they're shaking the pole or bumping into it 50 years ago, Gene Cernan, the last person to leave the surface of the moon, told me at 20 years that he never thought it would be that long before somebody went back. He died uh, not too long ago. I'm just totally surprised that we haven't been back to the moon yet. So that's Apollo 11, 1969. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the button below. You're welcome to leave comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And finally, if you like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button over on the bottom right hand corner. Thank you again for watching.